Hey gang, Jack Lair here. Uh, finally getting around to showing you guys the uh, ro robotics. By the way, uh, robotics, not robotics. Just don't search for that. But anyways, so I've got this here. I've got four giant batteries that we're gonna need and uh, everybody is home so you're gonna hear all kinds of background noise this should be a blast we've got no instructions so let's see what we can build just based on what we're looking at on the front all right so we're gonna open the box and because i've played with one of these before i know that the first thing we are going to need to do is put the batteries in this box right here. Now it opens up just like this. It's got two little catches. Let me see if I can get this. Aha! It takes two hands. You must push the little things like that and then reach up here and there's a little... and then it just opens right up. Now I've cleaned this out previously. I didn't do uh, quite a bang up job but get the batteries in here and we'll see if it actually works because I haven't tested it up until now. All right, so we have run into a problem. We have the batteries, we have the controller, we have the motor, but nothing happens. So we're gonna have to troubleshoot and find out where the problem is. We do get one of the motors to work, but all it does is make a really squealy noise. This one. So, we will do some troubleshooting and be back. I think. Well. Might be this one. Alright, as you can see, we've been hard at work. We've uh, figured out that the battery's good, the cables are good, uh, the connectors, aside from uh, pin one. Let me tilt you down there so you can see it. So, aside from number one over here, which is a little bent, uh, the rest of them are working. We checked all the cables. The cables are working. However, this is the only motor that shows any signs of life and the only thing we can get to do is this. Not exactly the most uh, productive <laughs> motor ever. So we're going to have to tear the motors apart, figure out why the motors are not working, and then maybe we'll actually be able to build something. Yay! This will probably be continued on to tomorrow. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep plugging away and talk to you again in a bit. Alright, so these tiny little motors, they've got basically a motor compartment on one side, and then they've got a gearbox on the other side. Now apparently whoever put had this before, because I got this from a thrift shop, remember, took it apart and then tried to put it back together. But they put the gears in here in the wrong order. So the reason you were getting that screeching noise is that the gears were, instead of, gears are supposed to interlock like this and go like that, they were going they were just like barely touching and going squeeze, 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 squeeze. So they were basically wearing away the plastic and a nice little powder came out. But the good thing is that now, while well, we've got everything torn apart. All right, so while I'm putting this back together, I do want to mention that I'm also going to uh, stop by my local hobby shop and pick up some gear grease. Now, what gear grease is, it's uh, essentially grease that is designed to go in the engines of RC cars and it's also if uh, you've ever torn apart a CD compartment, like a CD tray trying to fix a, you know, a broken Xbox or something like that, it's going to have the same, the same type of stuff as that. And then we'll put some of that in each motor so that hopefully it won't make that weird um, the weird noise because it is I mean it is plastic grinding on plastic and just like you know if you were to run a car with no oil you would eventually shave parts of your engine off it would make all kinds of bad things happen but 
I'll get that together. I'll repair the other motors, make sure they're all uh, working and functional. Hopefully it's just the gears out of order on the other ones as well. Because I really don't I really don't want to try and replace a motor in these things. They're too small and too um, just too small. And it's touchy as all get out. All right, back. So here is engine number two that we have working. It is louder than the other. So it probably needs gear grease as well to make it work a little better. I did find a little water inside, which really disturbs me. Uh, but another one operational. Two more to go. All right, engine three. Once again, noisy and this one makes different noises depending on which way you've got it facing. This one, the motor inside is actually bent. That's just some weight. So that's why occasionally it doesn't go fast. If you turn it at the right angle, it does just fine. So we'll have to be picky on where we put this motor if we want it to function right. You should put it in the least. It does. All right, so motor number four luckily was the most pleasant of them all. Just had to give the little, take the motor out, give it a little tap, and Ow. working like a champ. So we are ready for tomorrow because it's taken us two hours. Three, four? No, three or four. It, it's we taken started us at like. And now it's like, no, we started at like 8, now it's 11-ish. We started at 8 and it's 10.30, so two and a half hours it took us to fix that much. Uh, we're going to close up shop for the night. Fix this wire. Thing. We'll play with the wires tomorrow, make sure all of these little switches work, and then make sure all the wires work, and then we'll actually build something even though apparently we only have three wheels, which is odd. But I'm sure the other one is rolling around somewhere. And Anyways, no directions. We'll be back later. All right, we are back for day two. Uh, we're gonna start actually putting some stuff together, which means we're gonna have to get a little organized from what we did last night. We need to put some things back together. And then we'll go ahead and start building one of them. <coughs> um, we're gonna get all the parts out and then go from there. Okay, we have three wheels, which means we can't build anything that actually resembles a car. Oh, or at least not directly from the front. Again? Yes, uh, oh. at least not directly from the front. So what we're thinking of building is the walker. We done goofed. Which is that guy right there. And that's the Argus Lunar Beast. We may build actual Argus, the giant one, later on, but we'll try the the Lunar Beast first and see what other pieces we're missing. I also know that we're missing the weight on the back of that, so that will be a challenge down the road. But we'll get going and uh, see how things go. Alright, we're probably only going to get one build out of this because as you can see, it's starting to crack and it's cracking on every every piece that we put together and I mean this this toy is just two decades old so it just might not survive being put together and taken apart again but we'll build at least one and then we'll go from there all right so we've got some progress uh, uh, like I said a lot of these pieces are just snapping in half but we did uh, get this to go and that's about how fast it normally moved we're gonna go ahead and uh, hook up the rest of the motors see if we can get some cool stuff to happen but we've got movement now you used to be able to you could hook them up and like on the back tires and then if you had one go one way and one go the other it would actually turn it 
we're not going to get that far. Dude. Mm -hmm. we Doubtful. Don't. And we don't have the, the gear part that goes in here that would make the walk go. So, we're just no walking. All right. So, we did what we could. Uh, of course, one of the motors died. Uh, the one that would be spinning this. Uh, but we did get the the jaws open and close. It makes a lot of noise. Uh, it does roll, just like before. Very slowly. Kind of like a pirate, because he has a hook. And then we've got the claw there so that it can raise and lower. Oh, there we go. Haha, ha, it came back to life. Now we can turn it as well. Uh oh. I see that baby kind of in there. What? For the cord. <laughs> yeah, well that's why they have these little guys that are good for cord management because you basically just put the cord in there and then you plug it in and then it holds the cord in place. So that's what you would do to maintain all of this is that you would put them in, you would do cord management. Most of the things in the box show that. So there it is. Uh, we didn't, I didn't put the uh, case back together just because it is rather finicky. So I decided not to tempt fate by putting it all together and then making it not work. So I'm still just uh, pressing down the metal. But it's actually kind of cool that all the parts were designed around the motors. Uh, there are these little, there are the legs that we're missing the part for. There are these, which basically just, they attach onto top of the motors, and then when you turn the motor, it opens and closes them. Those work, but um, we, we didn't have any place to put them. Yeah, ran out of motors. Uh, we could have replaced the the claw or the, the little head, but for just playing around, uh, this was actually pretty neat. Sadly, we broke all kinds of stuff, so if you'll notice, this one is a full part, this one's a half part because it fell off. These just... Broke. From these just broke. From trying to take mm -hmm. them apart. Take apart and put them together, so. There are cracks everywhere. Mm -hmm. But for a 20 year old toy, you know what? Really good. Works pretty good, now they can have fun with it. Well, there you go. That is the uh, uh, Robotics R2000 series where you can build Argus if you had all the parts, which we don't. Um, if you get a chance to pick one of these up, uh, relatively cheap. I think I got this for five. what, like five bucks? Yeah. And well worth the five bucks just to kind of play with it again. This Memories of childhood. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, play on!